In the last video, we looked at how you calculate the value at risk for a portfolio that consisted of a single stock. We used the risk uh, time period as a daily uh, time period, and we talked mainly about a 95% confidence level. In this video, I want to go through these calculations for a specific stock. Now, where do I find my data? I can go to uh, Yahoo Finance, okay? And then I just have to uh, search for the particular uh, stock I'm interested in with the sticker, uh, the, the tape uh, uh, symbol. And let's use Walmart, WMT. Okay, so get the quote on that. All right, now, uh, Walmart, this gives the daily, this gives the current day stuff. But over here on the left-hand side are the historical prices. So that's what I want to go to. And on the historical prices, it gives me the uh, opening and closing and all of the uh, information back to whenever they started collecting and keeping the statistics on the web, I guess. Okay, the point is, though, down at the very bottom of this file, there is a place where you can download to your favorite spreadsheet the data. Okay, so uh, that's what I want to do. So let me pull that up, and here's what I've downloaded. So it gives me, again, high, low, close. Now, the thing I'm interested in, I don't want to get rid of all these other columns here, but I'm interested in the adjusted close. Well, what that means is that the close has been changed, modified for uh, dividends uh, being uh, issued and things like that. Okay, so let's look at what happens when I get rid of, of those extra columns. I just have the adjusted close here. Now, I want to create a new column, which is going to give me for each day what the uh, daily rate of return was uh, so that I can look at the differences between a day and the next and divide by the percent of gain so that I can end up and calculate the, the daily return. Okay, so that's what I want to use. Now, let's go and look at some graphs over here. Um, the first graph I just did was the report of what the stock prices was doing. And so Walmart was a pretty good one to look at here because it had some uh, ups and downs and so forth. So I should be able to get some reasonable numbers to look at. Now, remember from our discussion last time, we saw the point was that we wanted to look at the graph of the daily returns and see how often they occurred. And then we wanted to try to identify the worst uh, certain percent. Okay, so down here, I've done that. Remember, we calculated on the previous sheet here the what the daily returns were. And so here I have uh, gone and uh, calculated uh, these. And you see that it does form a reasonable the type of uh, normal distribution, a few bumps here and there. Okay, now uh, let's analyze these things. Well, it looks like I first chose to uh, analyze them in terms of the normal distribution. Okay, so I just took the data, used Excel to calculate the mean, the average of, the of all of those daily returns, and the standard deviation using the Excel function STDEV for that. And now, uh, remember the idea was that we wanted to find the lowest 10%, the lowest 1%, something like that. So there's built-in Excel functions for doing that. So, for example, here, if I wanted to find the cutoff, that would be give 1% uh, of the data points to the, to the left. I can use, well, if this had been a normal curve, of course. So I would use the norm inverse function put in 10% uh, because it's 10% to the left and use the mean and standard deviation. Bingo, it gives me uh, what percent of uh, loss that's going to correspond to. Uh, I can do the same for the bottom 5%. You just use 5% instead of 10, bottom 1%, etc. So these give the value at risk uh, percentages to convert them into dollar values I went back and looked at the price of the stock on the day I did this, $52.10. And so I convert that with each of these percentages here, uh, basically 2.8% of the $52.10 gave me the uh, risk uh, for at a 
uh, 90% confidence level, and so forth. Now, again, the way we read these or the way we interpret them is to say that for the next day, I have a 10% chance that I would lose at least a dollar 48 on this stock. I'd have a 1% chance of losing at least two dollars and 69 cents. Okay, now this was making the assumption of the normal distribution. We also talked about just looking at the historical data and uh, going through and figuring out what uh, data points would correspond to the different levels. Well, again, I can use a built-in function here. Let's do the easiest one first. There was 263 trading days. Uh, the date I used here was from uh, March 31st of 09 back through the April 1st of, of 08. Uh, so that had 253 trading days. So the, say the lowest 10% would correspond to the uh, 25th uh, lowest to return. So I can use the built-in function here in Excel to pick out the 25th smallest number from my list. So that was about 2.4%, and that then translates into a, a dollar 27 as my uh, dollar value of risk. Now notice that corresponds. That's a little less than a dollar 48 here that we had when we assumed we had a normal distribution. For the say bottom 1%, if you take 1% uh, of 253, it gives uh, you know 2.53. So I looked at the second lowest return and the third lowest return, then I extrapolated to get 53% between the two to give me a uh, predicted uh, return at the 99% confidence level of about 6.8%. You translate that over into a dollar value uh, and it gives like 356. No, this is uh, a, a bigger loss than what we did, assuming that it was a normal curve here. So these ways of approaching the calculation don't necessarily have to agree. They're roughly the same, they, or the, they, but there are differences between them. Uh, well, the, the point of this was to uh, indicate how you could use information about the normal probability distributions in order to compute this quantity of value at risk. Uh, or you could actually use uh, Excel techniques uh, to pick out the uh, lowest uh, number of, of terms to be able to calculate this value at risk. Well, uh, thanks for watching.